Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Emma. Uh, I thought I would sit down today and do a book unhaul because I've recently gone through my two bookshelves here and I have another one over there and they are like full to the brim. No more books can be shoved in between the other books. So I thought it was finally time to definitely go through, pick out quite a large stack to get rid of. Some of these books are ones that I just know I'll never read again. Some of them were so bad that I had to DNF them and some of them I think only a couple of them I didn't read at all and I don't plan to because I've just grown out of them and like I think they were, I don't even remember where I acquired them from, but um, it's time for them to go. Obviously I'm going to be donating them all to any kind of charity shops or book thrift shops that I can find, so it's not like I'm just throwing them out. I might be giving some of them to my friends and stuff like that, so I always love just like decluttering and getting rid of stuff, so um, without further ado, let us get into it. I've got my peppermint tea and my Phantom of the Opera mug, and I'm ready to get rid of these books. So the first book I'm unhauling is actually quite a shame because it is visually a very stunning book on the outside. It's got one of the prettiest covers that I've seen, but that book is Summer and Bird by Catherine Catmull. It's a very cool name. I picked this one up a few years ago because it looked stunning, honestly, like the cover is beautiful and then when you open it as well, like the interior design is so stunning. There's birds everywhere. Even on some of the pages, there's like designs on them with little birds and I just thought, it was so stunning. The description also kind of drew me in a little bit. In this one, we are following two sisters whose names are Summer and Bird. And it's a very kind of fairy tale um, story. It gives me a lot of Hansel and Gretel kind of vibes to it. So I decided to pick it up, but we are following these two sisters who live on the kind of edge, the crisp of these woods. I just said crisp, but I meant the cusp, and I think you know that. Um, so they're living on the cusp of these woods with their two parents, and one day their parents go missing, um, and they find out that their mother can actually transform into a swan. So it definitely has a lot of kind of Grimm's fairy tale elements to it, which was really cool. Something running through this whole story, which was really nice as well, is birds. Like, it really attaches itself quite... Um, closely to the magic of birds and the power of birds and everything like that. Obviously one of our characters' names is Bird. Um, and they follow these patchwork birds into this world called Down, where everything is kind of spooky and messed up and it's very kind of grisly and gloomy and scary and there they have to find their parents and specifically their mother because she has been kind of taken by the evil bird lady. The evil force in this world is called the Puppeteer, and she has actually taken force and control of all the birds and is using them to do her evil bidding. So we follow these two sisters as their kind of paths diverge in this world of down, and it was just... It was kind of strange, like I really enjoyed the premise, but the writing wasn't anything special. It tried to be too lyrical for its own good, and there were certain lines that I really adored, but more than that, I just felt like... The writer was just kind of reaching out with her writing and trying to do all these cool things with it and that kind of really got in the way and stood in the way and wrapped its way around the plot rather than actually being a good story. Um, and I don't want to read it again and I don't think I ever will so this is the first book I'm going to get rid of. I think I gave this a solid three stars but like it just wasn't anything super special and I know a more special book could take its place on my shelf so this one will be going, but it's just so beautiful. Oh, it makes me feel so bad. This next book, I just want off my shelf as soon as possible. Um, that book is The Oxford Inheritance by Anne A. MacDonald. I totally picked this up just because it was a dark academia book and we all know how I feel about dark academia. I was really harboring hopes that this would become like my new favorite dark academia book and it became my least favorite of all time. Like this was so poorly written that it's hard to explain. So, what's her name? We're following our main character, Cassie, who has just arrived at this new, made-up, fictitious, uh, new Oxford college that our author has invented, which was kind of cool, but we actually learned that she's there to find out what happened to her mother, because her mother disappeared. There's like a theme here. Her mother disappeared a few years ago when she was attending at this new, fictitious college, and basically it was just written off that she died, no one knows what happens. So Cassie is back, she has somehow managed to get admission to Oxford. She is from the States and she apparently has enough money to pay that tuition, so uh, good for her. She quickly finds out that there's like this secret society um, going on underneath the college, which of course there is because why, why wouldn't there be? Um, so she kind of starts to investigate this, she starts to fall in love with this policeman um, who starts to follow her around really creepily and like he's also 
literally part of the local police squad and he like stalks her and it's very strange. There's also this other boy she starts to fall in love with who is part of the secret society and she finally gets admission to this but on the day that she does I believe she finds out that her roommate actually kills herself and she comes back to um, her roommate dead. Um, and all this kind of secret weird stuff starts to happen and she tries to find her mother and like it was all right for the first 50 pages nothing made sense even at the end of this book there are books that you read where you can literally tell that the author has like a due date that they need to meet or maybe they just got too lazy but more often than not you just like you feel that pressure of them needing to finish and needing to wrap up the story so that they can get it in um, and that is exactly what happened our main kind of Climax and crisis takes place within the last 10 pages of this book. Nothing is ever explained or wrapped up. The ending is so abrupt and like I value abrupt endings but not when they're because you need to get your story in and like that was it was just so transparent that that was the case and like it just felt like an arc that stopped and just kind of went off a cliff and you were like what happened? I literally cannot explain to you what the secret society is about or what its secrets are and it was so bad like it was just really bad so um i'm really disappointed in this because like i said dark academia is one of my favorite genres but i will move on and i will find better dark academia books than this one this next book was a ya that i actually did really like i gave it like a generous three stars however i just know that i won't ever read it again and it is quite a sizable book so i'm just gonna take it off my shelves and yeah. But this guy is The Burning Sky by Sherry Thomas. Um, my friend actually gave this to me from home a few years ago when we did a book swap and I decided to give this one a go. This one is kind of framed as like a new fantasy-esque Harry Potter. Our main character is apparently the greatest mage of her generation, or so she's been told. There's like this prophecy about her. She's been told that it is her destiny and her duty to defeat the Bane, which is like the main source of evil in this new fantasy land. And she kind of starts going on this quest, we follow her getting trained, and then she runs into this other magician. Is he a magician? Oh gosh, his name is Titus, I think, which is honestly the worst name in a book for a love interest. No one wants to fall in love with a man named Titus. At least I don't. So yeah, sorry, he's actually the prince of this land, but he makes the mistake of falling in love with her because he's supposed to be training her and basically sending her to her death to defeat the bad source of evil in this land. So um, it was a really, really quick read and I did enjoy it. It wasn't horrible. It wasn't the worst thing I've ever read. Um, but I just, I honestly won't ever read it again. I've outgrown it and I might just give it to someone else who might enjoy it. So um, that is The Burning Sky. This next book is a DNF and it's really upsetting because I was so excited for this book. When I read the synopsis, it reminded me a lot of The Phantom of the Opera, which we all know what The Phantom of the Opera is to me. Um, but that book is The Queen of the Night by Alexander Chi. This is an absolutely huge book. It's over, I think it's 600 pages-ish and I was really excited to get into it. Our main character is this young orphan opera singer who is like the best opera singer of her age. She's basically a prodigy. Everyone wants to come see her. And this one night at a party, it's kind of um, saying that she makes a deal with the so-called devil or this new composer and this new kind of person who wants to portray her as kind of this immortal of immortal of a mortal character in one of his new operas and it's like the biggest role of the century so she accepts and then she kind of falls into this world she's also described on the back as a swashbuckler and that is something I aspire to be so I really wanted to read that however I got I think a hundred pages through and I honestly couldn't deal with the writing nothing was happening and another choice that this author made was not to use quotation marks not to format speech properly and just kind of leave the speech dangling there without uh, warning without anything to mark it as speech and that was kind of just confusing I wasn't loving it I didn't like like anyone in the story let alone our main character and um i do enjoy experimental stuff like that not that it's super experimental because so many books now have done that like blood red road did that um just a lot of other books have done away with kind of the speech part of it and i guess that does uh, play a key role in here she is an opera singer but like i just wasn't a fan i felt it confusing hard to keep up with and um more than anything it was just super duper boring so I don't think I'll give this another chance because all the reviews I've read of it after I DNF'd it said it was not worth it, so, um, yeah. 
Goodbye. This next book is a YA contemporary, and if you have been watching my channel for any length of time, you'll probably know that that's not really a genre that I have on my shelves at all, so I'm understandably getting rid of Emma in the Night by Wendy Walker. I actually haven't even started this. I got this a few years ago. So in this one, I think we're following this girl named Cassie uh, and her sister Emma, and one night they disappear, and no one knows where they go or kind of what happened to them. But then I think three years later, Cassie comes back, and she has no idea where her sister is. So it kind of follows this weird journey as they try to find Emma and... Uh, kind of this web of deceit or secrets that Cassie has or something like that. Uh, also one of our characters in here is a family psychologist, a doctor who kind of comes in and interviews the family, kind of searches them and scrutinizes them and interviews them all. Like it's very much um, a book that seems to be a family study of secrets which is just it's just so boring to me, like I really can't do with like the mundane everydayness of family life and family drama, like I just hate it. Unless it's Jane Austen, but like contemporary family drama, I just can't do it. I can't do it. So um, I'm just not even going to bother with this one, not even going to start it, and I'm just going to donate it. So there she goes. My foot is so numb. I'm currently sitting on three cushions because... I'm too short and this angle is too tall for me. This next book I feel like I've really grown as a reader that I'm getting rid of this book and I vow never to read his books or his works again. That's the tea. This was very much a huge high school phase for me as I think probably it was for everyone when these books came out and I read a whole bunch of his works and the only one I have left is The Fault in Our Stars which I think is John Green's probably best novel that I've read. I've read Looking for Alaska, which was awful, and Abundance of Catherine's, which was even more awful, Paper Towns, which was a mess. Um, however, when I read it, I really enjoyed The Fault in Our Stars. I cried. I cried at the movie. This was like a huge phenomenon. I don't even remember what the year this came out, but like everyone and their mother in high school had this book. And I still have it, but like I just think it's time to get rid of it. I'm never gonna read it again. I've come to really despise John Green as an author, I think. Just because like now when I go over the plots of Paper Towns and Alaska and Catherine's, it's just like the same. And like very deep at its core, there's a lot of sexist lines. I just feel gross now when I think about John Green and his books and I'm like, that would never be me again. I would never read those books. I would never enjoy those books much less, so I'm getting rid of The Fault in Our Stars. I don't think I really need to talk about the plot of this. We're following two teenagers with cancer. They fall in love and we all know what happens, so it's just so funny because like when I read this, I just thought it was the most astounding thing in the whole world and it just goes to show that like I've just grown so much as a reader that I can look at this and I'm like it's really not even good, like, but when I first read this, I was like, wow, this is the quirkiest, most clever, um, most beautiful book ever written, and now I'm like, no, it's really not, so, um, <sighs> goodbye, John Green. The fault was in yourself, so, ciao. This next one is a book that I picked up, and I was really excited to read, but then I realized who the author really was. And I should have looked at this book a bit more closely before I bought it, but it is the mammoth book of new Sherlock Holmes adventures. Um, however, I mistakenly bought a mammoth collection that is not by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. I don't really have an interest in reading um, modern authors' retellings and reworkings and new stories of Sherlock Holmes just because like I just want Arthur Conan Doyle or nothing else. Doyle or death, honestly. So um, I'm not even going to give this a chance, I don't think. Like, I'm not really interested in reading these new people's take on Sherlock Holmes. I just want the original good stories because I just think those are the best. I don't know, I've read a lot of them and I thought this was a huge collection of them, but I was wrong and they're just stories that people have written about Sherlock Holmes. It's basically just like fan fiction. And I love fan fiction, but um, I don't want Sherlock Holmes fan fiction, so... I'm gonna get rid of this. If you've been watching my vlogs recently, you'll know I finished this book, I gave it one star, and I promptly threw it to the top of this pile. That book is Jekyll Loves Hyde by Beth Fantasky. I've talked about this a lot recently, but it is a love story retelling of the descendants of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, where we are following Jill Jekyll and Tristan Hyde as they enter into this chemistry scholarship competition together to recreate the famous experiments from the novel by Robert Louis Stevenson. Um, 
need I say more? Like, it wasn't good. The writing in here was just honestly awful. Like, I, th there's no excuse. It was just so bad. The use of commas, <laughs> the use of ellipses, the use of literally just grammar was bad. There was not a redeeming quality to this book, um, except maybe the fact that it ended, so... I will bid this book a fond adieu because it made me laugh how bad it, at how bad it was. Um, I got this at a thrift store and probably to the thrift store it will return. These next two books I might do a giveaway of or I might just give to someone else who really needs them or wants them for school or something, but I am uh, unhauling my copies of The Iliad and The Odyssey because I had to buy new copies for my course that I'm taking about Greek epic and these copies did not suffice. The translations were not good enough and I honestly realize that now too because even reading um, the, oh gosh, Lattimore versions which I have, they're just so much better than these ones. I think these are the Samuel Butler ones, uh, translated quite a long time ago. <laughs> 1898 so I think it was time to get some new translations of these famous stories and I am honestly so glad that I did so I don't think I can really justify keeping two versions of them when like I honestly probably won't ever need these old copies again uh, I am really sad though because this is a really beautiful cover and edition of the Iliad like I just think it's so stunning but um, like I said don't need them so they're gonna go all right, we now come to the last book of this unhaul. It's also one I read recently in January, and that is 15 Dogs by Andre Alexis. Um, I didn't enjoy this. I gave it two and a half stars. This is a contemporary take on an apologue or a little short moral story. We're following 15 dogs in Toronto who are granted human consciousness by the gods Hermes and Apollo, and they are taking a bet to see if these dogs granted human language and human thought can die happy. Um, and then from there we just follow these 15 dogs as they go about their lives learning that they can speak and think and that they're slowly losing their doggy ways. Um, I found it really boring to be honest. Uh, the writing wasn't anything special, it was just very blunt, concise to the point, which I don't have a problem with, but the story was just not compelling or exciting to me. I hated it, so um, I'm just never going to read this again. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to get rid of it. All right, so those are finally all of the books that I am unhauling. So I hope that they leave some better, bigger room on my shelves for better, bigger books. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have any video um, ideas or recommendations that you would like to see, definitely let me know. I'm always open to film literally anything. It doesn't even have to do with booktube, so... Um, but yes, I am really happy to get rid of all those books finally. I'm going to probably donate them because obviously we all know I'm going to go to the thrift store and acquire even more books because that that is the way. Um, but I will see you in the next video. I hope you're having a good, happy, healthy day wherever you are. And yeah, ciao.